Hello everyone, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. You're so new to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you into the Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. So the last place we left off, ah yes, we had just met at that little uh, grill, bar and grill with the gang. Yeah, I'm calling them the gang now because that's I guess what we're gonna be. We're just gonna be the gang from now on, and we're gonna discuss what we're going to do with our little project, our little morbid, little morbid project horrifying project about really terrible things that are not going to have any negative consequences whatsoever i can guarantee it i'm lying <laughs> but anyway guys sit back and enjoy let me just take you the next 20 minutes and let's jump right into it all right <clears throat> alarm chain you're up let's do it hey. well you know they're all a catch and i bet you want to make a good impression that definitely wasn't what i expected w what She's leaning back against the chair, looking to the side with a curious smile covering her face. Despite its inquisitive nature, it's still gentle. There's a noticeable hesitance to her, a feeling that she's letting me choose how far I want this conversation to go. I'm distinctly reminded of my mother sitting outside on a summer afternoon, talking with, to my aunt as I play with Marcus. Not wanting to feel melancholic, I push the memory away, forcing myself not to dwell and bring myself back to Lily's sideward glance. Following her gaze, I can see Lucas is still standing there, staring up at something. He's dressed up too formal for he's dressed up he's dressed up too formal for the situation, which isn't too abnormal for him, but it looks a little messier than usual, like he did it in a rush. I'm asking if any of the boys have caught your eye. Oh, I see. You're the Zoe stand in. You're the one who <laughs> This is happening a little earlier than I thought it would, but alright. That brings my attention crashing back towards Lily like she's a freight train and I'm just a small, small, small little fruit cart stuck on the tracks. She's still watching Lucas, but I somehow feel like she's looking at me from every other, from every direction at once. I know she's not being malicious and she's being just overly, and she's just overly, and she's just over eagerly approaching girl talk, but I can't help but feel overwhelmed. This isn't something I've ever talked to someone about. It caught my eye. I, Wallace, you know it's okay to have a crush on them, right? Lay's basically a bad boy punk fantasy come true. Oscar looks like a porn star, and Lucas says this hidden endearing side to him. Turning back to me, I can see her gaze is soft, as if they're trying to calm me down through some hidden psychic powers. Oh, really now? Interesting. Oh, I wonder if this takes place in the same universe as Psychic Connections. Wouldn't that be one hell of a crossover? Rook, if you're listening, this could be an awesome crossover! Regardless, it works, and I can feel my heart rate slow down, my blood no longer rushing to my ears. Relax, it's just girl talk, no need to stress. Right, yeah, just chatting. So? I'm not sure yet. I don't think it's developed enough to be anything, I only just met them. Her slow nod is both understanding, but also unsatisfied. I could probably toss her more of a bone, but I don't want to set myself up for something. I don't even know how to explain this to myself, let alone her. What about you? Are you into any of them? Any of my extremely gay classmates? Right, that's a stupid question. I'm an idiot. I try to ignore the itching sensation crawling on my neck and maintain eye contact, desperate to not die from embarrassment. Or, you know, at all. You you must be a catch, right? I like to think I'm a catch, but no. No one right now. I like all of them as friends, but I don't think I'd want to date any of them. I'd want something more normal. M more normal. I don't think they're weird. She quirks an eyebrow upwards before glancing over at the boys again. It's only for a moment before she brings her attention back to me. Flicking my gaze over to the boys, I can see Oscar's now standing up and flexing his arm in front of Lucas, who is trying desperately to look at anything but towards the bulging bicep in front of him. It's a good thing Lay isn't here, because I can imagine him scolding Oscar for acting like this. I don't think he let this happen. Not for long, at least. You're a perfect match for them. What? That's all I had to talk about. Now we just gotta wait for everyone to get ready. Might end up having to get you to go to Lucas. Might, might end up having to get you to go get Lucas if Lay's back before him. Why me? He seems more comfortable around you than the rest of us. I try my best, but I think he prefers you. I don't really get it. I haven't done anything special. I don't think I have, at least. She shrugs at that, brushing it off with such nonchalance that it makes it seem more like a matter of fact instead of just her personal theory. I'm not quite sure either, but it's a good thing. He's more comfortable around you, and that's definitely helping him mesh with our group more. I don't think he'd stay around if it was just Oscar, Lay, and myself. I 
That I can agree with. He doesn't seem like the others nearly he doesn't seem to like the others nearly as much, but I don't think he dislikes them either. They just need some time to get used to each other. Looking back over towards Oscar, it's clear that he's trying to look inconspicuous and failing completely. Anyone can tell he's trying to peek over to our table. Then our eyes meet and there's a beat where he, we just stare at each other. The moment that goes that the moment goes the moment that goes for eternity is broken by Lily's giggling, and Oscar flashes me a massive smile like he's just an innocent bystander. Despite my best attempts to hold back a smile of my own, it still twitches the corner of my mouth up. It's hard to resist the energy, especially with Oscar's almost blinding brightness and Lily's constant giggling. I signal for him to come over, and he all but darts off his stool like he's trying to win a race against all the other patrons for the last seat in the bar. He looks like such a dork, but plays it off with an abundance of confidence. Prince Charming, huh? Lily's teasing voice in my ears almost enough to cause him to turn into a fierce, fiery inferno. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous of all these people with dark fur colors. The redness peeks through my almost translucent white too easily. Ha! <laughs> Should probably get you on that side. Gotta fit everyone in. Don't want to leave anyone out too dry, right? He offers his hand, and the moment I take it, I'm hoisted up out of the seat with such effortless force that it's almost scary. He could probably lift both Lily and me with only one arm and not break a sweat. Our slides... Oscar slides into the seat, letting me fumble to get in next to Lily. He looks excited to be back in the group. Well, some of the group. His whole body looks to be swaying to the light pop music playing over the radio. I wouldn't even I wouldn't have even noticed the music if it hadn't seen him bouncing to the beat. Even his tail is tapping against the ground next to the seat. Did you guys have a good chat? I think it went pretty well. Had little girl talk minus the girl part. They both look at me, waiting to see if everything's alright with me. Even though Oscar's staying ever the optimist, there's a glint of concern in his eyes that matches the warmth radiating from Lily. Yeah, it was nice. I'm glad we had it. For some reason, Oscar preens himself like he did something amazing, and I know he's just being overdramatic to try and keep the tone light. I'm not going to lie to myself and say it isn't working. Good. How about the one for the heavy stuff? Better to have Lily for that. Speaking of me, I'm going to the ladies' room. Try not to get into trouble, boys. <laughs> no promises. I prepare to slide out of the booth for her, but before I can even try, she climbs up onto the seat and crawls over me. I'm frozen in shock as she manages to get out and skips towards the toilet without acknowledging it at all. <laughs> Oscar, on the other hand, is cackling like he's some villain in a cartoon. There's no maliciousness from him, but I have to resist the urge to pout like a child. He calms shortly after and he looks me over, eyes lingering on my own. Normally this would ignite a signal for the blood to rush to my face, but it doesn't feel like he's checking me out. More that he's satisfied with what he sees. Man, he looked much better today. I feel a lot better. I just needed some sleep. He looks around to the rest of the rest. He looks around to the rest of the restaurant, taking in the warm ambience and delicious scent of grilled fish that's coming from the kitchen. The kitchen is hidden behind the bar. The only view into it is the long window stretching across the entire back wall, allowing everyone in the restaurant to just barely see some of the chefs. What do you think of the place? Pretty great, right? I didn't even know it existed. I used existed, and I used to come to the beach a lot. Yeah, I came down here in the summer in my first year, and I wanted to check out any seafood places around the beach. Turns out this place is a local favorite, and I've come here ever since. I bet the boys love it when you take him here. Never taken any guy here before. That catches me off guard, and I can't stop a dubious expression from covering my face. His only reply is a sheepish grin. It's so cheesy I'd have to resist the urge to roll my eyes like Lucas. You're telling me that you've never taken a guy that you picked up from the beach here? Not much of a dating kind of guy. So you just take them home right away? Well, we typically drink and dance at the club for a while. And nothing else. You just take them home for sex afterward? Pretty much, yeah. There's a twinge of something I don't understand in my chest, and I look for something to change the subject. I bring about the first thing that comes to mind, even though I know it's probably not the best idea. What happened to your coach yesterday? Is that normal? A sigh is the first thing that comes out of his mouth, and it saps most of his energy with it. He doesn't look disappointed or annoyed, more like silently accepting his fate. Yeah, it's, he's just a mother hen. It's, he, I'm doing great. I still have the best times on the team. No one else comes close. It's the reason I got a scholarship instead of poaching some international import. I think he's more worried about you overworking yourself than the times. There's a flash of annoyance in his eyes, but it flickers and dies, morphing into something more melancholic. That smile never leaves his face, and there's no animosity towards me. Don't worry about me, little man. I like swimming, and I want to do it as much as I can. He just worries too much. Nothing wrong with a little more eye candy, after all. 
He waggles his eyebrows and sits up straighter. His loose tank top does little in the way of hiding anything, anything especially with how he's purposefully trying to emphasize the muscles on his chest. But I think he's just distracting me again. He doesn't want to talk about any of the heavy stuff, so he's just changing the topic. I suppose I should let him. I hope this isn't going to blow up in my face later. All right, just promise me you won't overwork yourself, okay? I won't, man. You sound like Lay. He'd be so proud. With that topic done and dusted, for now, the mood lightens and there's a sense of relief filling my chest. I didn't realize that prodding Oscar about that would be so stressful. Too many bad memories, I suppose. You're from Everwinter, right? You managed to find your way here pretty easily. Mr. Gruppy was spamming Lily's phone before you showed up. Yeah, born here. I used to come to the beach a lot when I was a kid. My brother used to take me all the time, especially since Everwinter never really gets too cold. Oscar's little ears twitch at the mention of my brother, and there's something morbidly curious about the way he's inquisitively furrowing his brow. Older brother? Yeah. He's got good taste. I think Evernorth Beach is like one of the best beaches I've ever been to, and trust me, I've been to a lot. The place is huge, and you can go so far out before the current begins to drag you. I'm only able to nod at that, unable to really keep focusing on the conversation. He says something else before laughing, something about an Eversouth beach that doesn't exist? But all I can focus on is the window looking out over the shore and in perfect view of a specific rock. It's sitting near the top of the sand where it meets the dirt and meshes together. Ooh, oh, beautiful. I've sat there so many times, but I can't remember any of those except for that laugh for that night. The beach had been empty that night, and the breeze was so cool despite just coming out of summer. The waves were crashing against the shore, and it was so loud, and I... And I... Wallace? You are right. Jogging me out of my memories is an otter whose face is barely an inch away from my own, sparking that familiar feeling when he pinned me against the wall yesterday, and there's that spicy mustelid scent barely tingling my nose. Huh? I nearly jump when I feel a hand on my jaw, pushing it up. It's Lily's, and she's wearing a smile that's more suited for a devil than a college student as she stands next to my booth. <laughs> wow! Don't draw on the table. People will stare. S sorry, I was daydreaming. I wasn't referring to that. Realizing that my gawking isn't very subtle, my cheeks tingle as blood rushes to them. It doesn't look like Oscar's oblivious to it either, as he's looking down at me with the biggest smug smile that I can easily imagine Lay smacking him. As we get Lily back into her place, I think over everything that's happened to us in the past few days, trying to reach for something to change the subject to, anything to get the focus off my burning face. Just, how good are you at swimming, Oscar? You're always talking about it, and the way you talk to your coach, you sound pretty legit. The way he's staring at me with those sparkling eyes, filled with an excessive amount of smugness, lets me know that he's very aware of this not-so-subtle attempt at a conversation change. Thankfully, it looks like he's going hes going to go, go along with it. Pretty good, I'd say. I'm the best on the team currently. Should be considering I should be considering I got a scholarship. Is getting a swimming scholarship that hard? I got a couple of small ones, but they're like really small. At least sounds just as intrigued as I am. I didn't even qualify for any scholarships. Hell, I was lucky enough to be accepted into Everwinter with my grades. This isn't a super elite school, but it's still a considerably great land. Yeah, it's real hard. There's a very limited amount of scholarships they're allowed to give us. We're lucky we're a Division I school, or else those slots would have been even more limited. Division I school? Don't worry about any of the details, man. Just know that it's rare for them to, to not use a scholarship... Just know that it's rare for them to not use a scholarship trying to poach an import from another country. You gotta be great, already competitively successful, and still have great grades. It causes Lee to giggle and poke the otter's arm, who gives a faux-wounded expression and looks at me pleadingly. It's surprisingly effective despite its obvious facetiousness, but he breaks into a chuckle of his own before I'm able to respond. Hey guys, come on, I'm smart. The brain's a muscle too, and if there's one thing I'm good at, it's working all my muscles. Maybe a little too much if coaches to go by. Isn't the brain an organ? It definitely is. Well, pretty good with those too. He leans forward and whispers that with a husky voice, laying it on super thick. Audible gulp is the final straw stopping Lily from bursting out in laughter, and Oscar joins her much to my humiliation. Despite how much fun they're having, he reaches out and rubs the side of my arm in a comforting way. It's a bit out of place considering the tone, but looking up at his eyes, they look like they're trying to reassure me. Did he think he was ups did he think he upset me with that? For someone who's always trying to be so playful and flirty, he's surprisingly sweet when he wants to be. And with both their infectious laughter still roaring strong, I lose myself in the mood for as long as I can. After a couple more minutes of laughing and sharing stories about our time in Everwinter, Oscar having the most interesting despite Oscar having the having the most interesting despite only being there for a couple years, Lucas finally walks over to our table and sits next to me with a little with little fanfare. 
He looks awestruck like a child being taken to a theme park for the first time, looking around to the bar and other patrons with his mouth agape. Everything okay? A nod is the only response he gives as his gaze jumps from table to table, completely oblivious to the rest of us staring at him. I don't think he gets out much, so he's just enjoying the view. Ain't that right, Grumpy? At Oscar's silly nickname, Lucas finally tears his eyes back to our table, pouting like we just interrupted one of the best naps of his life. I'm able to get a closer look, and he's a little jittery, probably from excitement if I had to guess. Yeah, my parents don't take me out often. Well, 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 we'll have to take you out more, right? Oscar nudges my arm with his elbow and gives me a little wink, a small indication to play along. I'm sure what to do, I just simply nod as he speaks, hoping that's enough for what Oscar's doing. I think he's trying to make Lucas feel more included and welcome in our group. Now that I think about it, he's always been trying to include the fox in everything we do. It's just like he said that day we met. Anyone can be friends if you try hard enough. He really believes that. I'm still not entirely sure, but I can't say it isn't a wonderful thing to want. Speaking of people who he will need to win over, a familiar possum's head is visible over Oscar's shoulder as he pushes through the door. It's hard to see with most of his body being blocked by the back of the booth, but it's clear from pink from the pink color that he isn't wearing his usual outfit. Then he rounds the corner and all hell breaks loose. Oh dear. Oh my god! What? I mean, more power to you, man, but that is not what I expected to see you wearing. I love pink, by the way. Just didn't expect to see the princess part. Okay. Alright, princess. <laughs> princess Lay. Lay's standing there, except he's wearing something completely different now. Instead of his usual leather jacket and red shirt, he's wearing something much more eye-catching and something I've never in a million years expected to see him in. He's wearing a pink hoodie, but instead of reaching all the way down to his torso, it stops just under his chest allowing his stomach to be easily visible as well as the features underneath. I'm not able to make out the details of them this far away, and I'm a little too stunned to really comprehend what I'm looking at, and it's such a stark difference from how I imagine Lay in my head. He catches my eye when he sees how, when he sees how bewildered I am, and when he sees how bewildered I am, he just lets out a sigh before giving us the barest of explanations. My sister made me wear this. That single action lights the fuse and sets it off for the rest of the group. Oscar all, do, all but jumps out of his seat, looking between the rest of us, rest of us and Lay as if screaming, Look at this! You never told me you could dress sexy. This looks like something I'd see at a club or something. Hell, I could even see myself wearing that, and that's saying something, man. It's just something I used to wear in high school. You had a sexy phase, man? Can you stay in this more? I'm sure it won't just be me who'd appreciate it. I think all the boys would appreciate it. He waggles his eyes towards me and even nudges Lucas's shoulder. Amusingly, the fox looks more surprised by that than the, what Lay's wearing. If you keep this up, and this will be the last time you'll see me in this. Come on, dude, don't be like that. We're just saying you look hot, right, guys? You do look really good. I'm enjoying the eye candy, but I feel, a l but I feel like I'm not the target demographic here. Lay lets out a huff, but I don't think he's annoyed. I just don't think he was expecting this kind of attention. Instead of acknowledging them, he looks over at me. He's trying to gauge my reaction, but all I'm able to give him is a nod as I try to maintain eye contact. I know if I think too hard about what he's wearing, I'm going to light myself up like a candle, and that's in the best case scenario. Despite looking completely different from than from what he usually wears, it fits him in a way, but it, it still feels like something he'd wear. There's something rebellious about someone as gruff as him wearing something like this. I get the feeling he's gotten a lot of attention because of this before, and that's probably the part of the reason. It feels like Lay's trying to say something with it. Most likely, I don't give a shit what you think. My answer, or lack thereof, must be amusing to him because he lets out a snort and raises an eyebrow towards me. I don't know what the big deal is. It's just a hoodie. My roommate wears stuff like this all the time. And just like that, the attention switches from Lay to the fox. Mostly Oscars as he leans in closer, much to Lucas's dismay. You have to introduce me to him sometime. I think we'd get along great. Yeah, I bet the two of you would. You're both very loud and have no sense of boundaries. So, is that a yes? <laughs> Lucas sighs and stares up at the otter, looking defeated and just nods, not even bothering to resist Oscar's prying. Content with that answer, Oscar goes back to his seat and returns to admiring Lay. To his credit, Lay doesn't even bother reacting to his spying at all. I'm not sure if it's because he's just expected this, he's just expected this or if he's used to it, but either way, it doesn't look like the attention bothers him too much. Now, as exciting as Lay's new outfit is, we should probably settle down before we annoy the staff. At the sound of that, Oscar tears his eyes away from the possum and looks towards our side of the table, putting on an innocent face that looks too cheesy to be remotely believable. I come here a lot, so let's not get me in trouble with the owners. I like this place, alright? 
You're the one making a scene. We just want a quiet lunch, but I don't think you know what that means. A devilish grin spreads across the otter's face with such ominousness that it makes my skin crawl. His eyes dart between Lucas and me before he leans back against the cushioned seat. He looks like an evil mastermind the way his eyes are twinkling with mischief. I saw both of you checking him out. Wallace was a second away from jeweling on his lap, and you're not as subtle as you think you are, Grumpy. I caught your eyes darting back to him whenever you thought no one was looking. I expect Lucas to give some kind of retort or insult, but he just looks away, acting as if Oscar didn't say anything at all. I can't see any of his features, but I can almost feel the heat coming off of him. Enough, both of you. Am I sitting next to Oscar? Oh, right. Sorry, that was a little too much fun to watch. I got distracted. Here, let me sort it out. After what feels like an hour of shuffling about, which in actuality is only a few minutes, but Oscar's desire to peek at every angle of lay makes it feel like an eternity, we manage to seat ourselves inside the booth. On one side sits Oscar and Lay, the two largest guys in the group, though Oscar dwarfs even Lay in sheer size. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there, guys. This, oh, oh, this has been a, just a mm, chef's kiss episode. <laughs> Seeing Lay in that getup, oh my god. Incredible, I love it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!